Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is David Camacho and welcome to a case study about predicting attrition. This is a data set regarding DDS analytics and it attempts to predict attrition based off of a previous data set and being able to leverage statistical models and um, predicting that to avoid turnover because we know that turnover is very expensive and uh, you get into the you know the theme of cost per hire and whatnot. So this is what we're aiming to uh, predict today. So for today's agenda, I'm sharing my screen so you can follow along with me. For today's agenda, we're going to cover the overview of the data set. I'm going to explain my process for the exploratory data analysis. I'm going to speak to you about the process of what worked and what didn't work. And then finally, I'm going to show you the most optimal model for predicting attrition. And then finally, give you the conclusion and my recommendation. So the overview about the data set was that there are 870 observations and 36 variables. There are 27 continuous variables in notes. So that ranges from ID number to age to distance from home to hourly rate, to daily rate, to monthly rate. And we have nine categorical variables, which ranges from gender to marital status to job satisfaction and whatnot. So one of the things that I did after that was being able to see how much people have or how many observations had actually turned over. And there was only 16% attrition. So out of the 870 observations, there were only 140 that have turned over. And so this may or may not be a hindrance later in my models because there is such a small population in order to have my, K and my models be able to predict this. So one of the things that I did right off the bat was perform an exploratory data analysis. And so knowing that I had over 30 variables being able to draw scatter plots for every combination seemed like such a burden and such a hassle. And not that I didn't want to do it, but more than anything, because there was an easier way. So one of the things that I did was I built a Shiny app that allowed me to dynamically develop scatter plots based off of my chosen X and Y variables. And after I chose my variables, the scatter plot would draw and I would be able to filter by attrition and show the marginal plots and show the distribution and also add a smoothing line to be able to see if there was an actual correlation amongst my variables. And so there were actually two interesting plots that I came up with. And the very first one was age versus num companies worked. I saw that although there wasn't a completely linear relationship, it was pretty close and it gave me something to work with. Logically for me, it was, well, if there is a young person that has worked at many companies uh, at such a young age, well, perhaps they are more than likely to turn over. And then consequently on the second plot, I chose years in current role versus years since last promotion. And here we're able to see a linear correlation as well. And my logic behind that was, well, if a person has been in their current role for quite a few years without a promotion, then they may be more than likely to uh, turn over. So I stuck with age versus num companies worked and I decided to just start with the K and N model. And basically a KNN model, it predicts the observation based off of its nearest neighbors. And one of the challenges is being able to choose the most optimal K. And so that just means being able to choose the amount of neighbors that you want it to look at. And after running an iteration of 100 <clears throat> Ks, I came to the conclusion that K at 11 gave me the best accuracy at 87%. Unfortunately, although my accuracy was at 87%, my sensitivity also was favorable, but my specificity was 8%, which is extremely low. And so what that basically is telling me is that out of the 23 that had turned over my model, only accurately predicted two of them correctly. So that was very low. So I decided to move on to naive Bayes which is also a uh, machine learning algorithm that um, is able to predict its probability based off of features within the variables. 
but it does assume that the variables are conditionally independent, which is where the naive comes from. So I decided to stick to the agent on company's word. Unfortunately, my accuracy had not changed and my sensitivity hadn't changed, which was a good thing, but my specificity was in a, so that didn't help at all. I decided to append my job satisfaction into the existing two variables and my accuracy, in fact, actually decreased. And so did my sensitivity and my specificity stayed the same with NA. So at this point, I my, my thought process was, well, I don't think it's helping that um, I have such a low population of turnovers. And what that means is I can either change my, uh, adjust my threshold or I can undersample to eliminate a couple of no's to level the playing field, or I can oversample to have more yeses to level the playing field. But there are some considerations to take into account. So what I did was I decided to go, I decided to go back to my KNN model and I decided to adjust my threshold. And so I adjusted my threshold. And so this was actually, fortunately for me, the optimal model because it presented a favorable specificity and sensitivity and accuracy. And I came to the conclusion that the adjusted threshold that was optimal for me was a 16% threshold. 140 of the 870 had turned over. So for me, it made sense to start with the 16% threshold. So what that meant was that for any of the probabilities that were yeses, if the probability was greater than a 16%, automatically change them to a yes. And so this was favorable in the sense that it gave me a balanced sensitivity and balanced specificity. So meaning that for the sensitivity out of the 730 that did not turn over, my model was able to accurately predict 462 of them correct by the same token, uh, for specificity, out of the 140 that did turn over, my model was able to accurately predict 95. And we're able to see the evidence here um, with this table here and also the accuracy of 64 and sensitivity of 63, which we did say had suffered. But my specificity is way higher than what it was. It's now at a 67%. Whereas my original KNN and Nave Bayes was at a 8% or NA. So in conclusion, my recommendation is that we continue to predict attrition with the KNN optimal model of adjusting the threshold of greater than 16%. And in this way, there is no undersampling or oversampling needed. And we achieve a sensitivity and specificity of 60 per, of greater than 60% actually. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to email me or you can check out the actual files via the GitHub repo or actually see the NIT file in my personal GitHub site or actually play around with the variables in my Shiny app. So again, thank you very much for attending this uh, case study. It was very fun for me. I learned a lot from it and I hope you did too. Thank you again.